Hello, pre-calculus students, and welcome to our continuing and conclusion, con concluding video on power functions. And here we have a problem that asks us to do some analysis of the function. State the power and the constant of variation for the function. Graph it and analyze it for domain, range, continuity, increasing, decreasing, symmetry, boundedness, extrema, asymptotes, and end behavior. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is graph this. You can certainly use your TI-8384 graphing calculator. It would be very, very useful. And when you graph it, let me set up my scale here. you should get something that looks like this. Okay. It's not a great picture, but uh, it, it's enough for us to do the job here. All right, let's start. Graph it and analyzing it for the domain. Well, the domain, you can substitute anything in here for x except 0, right? So x cannot be 0. So this is negative infinity to 0, union 0 to positive infinity. Exclusive, I'm using parentheses for all of my intervals here. Uh, the range, again, the graph is very useful. You can see that it looks like it's going to have a horizontal asymptote here. At, net at zero. So the range is anything greater than zero. Anything from zero to positive infinity. Okay. Continuity. Now continuity is something that everyone sort of has a good intuition of it, but at the level where you're in taking pre-calculus or calculus, um, you kind of have to be a little bit more precise with your, your explanation. Okay. So the continuity here the correct answer would not be yes, it would not be no, because it's continuous somewhere, and it's discontinuous somewhere. Okay? So the correct way to say this is that it's discontinuous at x equals 0. You can also say that it's continuous for everything from negative infinity to 0 and zero to positive infinity, <clears throat> okay, basically, uh, it happens to be similar to the domain, but that's not always going to be the case, okay. And, and either of these uh, descriptions will be sufficient for now. Once we get to calculus, we'll get a, a more rigorous definition of this. Uh, so you got that done, increasing or decreasing, and Students and people in general get this concept a little bit mixed up. I mean, it's, it's increasing at a lot of different, it, it looks, we can say that it's increasing from here to here. We can also say that it's increasing from here to here, okay? But the way we answer this, the convention is to say, for which values of x is y increasing? Okay. For which values of x is y increasing. Well, in other words, for which values of x is there a positive slope? So you can look at the picture and you can see that everything from negative infinity up to zero is where it's increasing. It's got a positive slope or we're walking uphill. Everything else after that is decreasing. So from negative infinity to zero, it's increasing. And decreasing is the analogous case, everything from zero to positive infinity. Got that done. Uh, symmetry. So again, symmetry is something that we have in a very basic intuition of it. But when we're talking about this in higher level mathematics, you have to be able to use some precise terms. It's either odd, even, or neither. So if it's odd, you can you can 
it's symmetric about the origin. If it's even, it's symmetric over the y-axis. And you can see this is symmetric over the y-axis. The left side and the, white, the, the right side have a clear symmetry. So this is an even function. Uh, boundedness. And so boundedness refers to the y values, the range. Is the range limited anywhere? Well, here you can see that it is limited. Everything in the range is above zero. Okay, so it's bounded below. Because it cannot get any any lower than zero. Okay? And we don't have to say where it's bounded, we just have we can just say that it's bounded below. Okay. Um, extrema. And this is really just maximums and mins. And you can see here there are no max or mins. It's just no matter what point you pick, I can pick a point that's smaller than that. No matter what point you pick, I can pick a point that's higher than that. So this is none. You would only see extrema if you have like a, a peak or a valley or, or a vertex for those of you who, um, who might see some polynomials or might see some um, quadratics. Uh, now, asymptotes. Now, this is tricky. Asymptotes and end behavior. Um, this is what I want to draw your attention to. We've always used um, an equation. We've, we've always said y equals something, x equals something. And at this point, we need to be more specific. We need to be more rigorous than this. Okay? So let's start with horizontal asymptote. Let's start with horizontal. horizontal asymptote. The definition is that as x approaches infinity, y should get closer and closer to that value. So what we used to say is that it, here you can see that it's, it's just going to be y equals 0. Okay? That's the horizontal asymptote. But we need to do this using limit notation. And we need to say that the limit of f of x, this is the function f of x, as x approaches infinity, in other words, as x gets really, really huge, is equal to 0. Okay. And then we also have to say, what's the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity? As x goes towards the extreme left, that also approaches 0. Now, this is not always true. It's not always going to be 0. It just happens to be that for this particular function. Okay? So this way, even though it takes longer to write, is the accepted way. Um, this notation right here was OK in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, but in pre-calculus going forward, uh, this is the notation that we're going to use. Now let's look at the um, vertical asymptotes. And again, you can see here, this is x equals 0. That's a vertical asymptote right here. But we want to describe this better. We want to say what happens as you come from the, the right and what happens as you come from the left. So if we go from the right, so we have to express this using limit notation. And we say the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 from the right, so from the right, we use this plus sign here. So as you start from on this curve and you go from the right to the left, okay, so from the right, getting closer and closer to the zero, you can see that you're going to, the, the y values increase to infinity. So this is equal to positive infinity. And that's only one half of the, um, the vertical asymptote. Even though we only, we only have one vertical asymptote here, what if you come from the left? Well, then we say the limit of f of x as x approaches 0. From the left, you can probably guess we're going to use a minus sign here, is equal to positive infinity as well. Okay. So again, um, it takes a little bit longer to write this, but this is the very precise definition. If, 
if you just write that it's x equals zero, we can't really from this from this one statement we don't really know what's really going on. We don't really know if it's going straight up or it's going straight down, or you know there could be a lot of different um, different interpretations of this. But if you write it in this notation, it is impossible to mistake what this graph is going to look like. We know that if you approach it from the right, it's going to go straight up to positive infinity. If you approach it from the left, that's also going to approach positive infinity. Um, and this in he, this here, the for the horizontal asymptotes, this is also the end behavior. They're actually one and the same. Okay. Now, they don't always, uh, th they, you're not always going to get zero here. You might get some other number, and you might also get infinity. Okay, but we will continue that um, at a later date. So, just kind of a big picture here. Okay. And, you know, this was one problem, and it took a little bit of time. But the key here is we want to be precise. What we want to work on is, is using the right mathematical language. We have a very basic intuition. We can kind of describe this. We can say this arrow points up, this arrow points up. These arrows get closer and closer to zero. But um, if you're gonna, as we study higher level mathematics, you have to be able to use the language and the notation of higher level mathematics. All right, so we'll end this lesson here. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you struggle, with this, if you have a hard time, uh, ask your teacher. Thank you again. Have a wonderful day.